Okay, if you've watched this show before, you know I'm a fan of this guy. He's funny. I've caught clips of him online. Uh, he was littering my Facebook feed for a while. I've watched other clips on uh, on YouTube and that of him. And he's funny. He's really funny. He's got really good crowd work. But uh, I was excited when I saw that he had a Netflix special. So I did what I'm sure a lot of people did. I watched it. Oh, and if you watched it, you probably know what I mean. So I'm going to read this article here by Vulture. I don't know who they are, but it was the only kind of good article. This is this was a pretty this is a pretty new uh, special, and I was going through to see what people were saying. It was mostly I was finding Reddit posts, things like that. But these guys talked about, it, and this was a pretty good article as far as summing it up. So I'll read read this. So Matt Rife works a crowd of his own making. The opening joke of Matt Rife's Netflix special, Natural Selection is set at a restaurant in Baltimore, a city Rife describes as ratchet. The hostess has a black eye, Rife tells the crowd, which prompts one of Rife's companions to wonder why she's been assigned to greet people instead of being moved into the kitchen where patrons can't see her face. Yeah, Rife tells his friend, but I feel like if she could cook, she wouldn't have had that black eye. <laughs> which is, you know, it's bad, but funny. Uh, the crowd laughs loudly, shocked, but also excited. That joke suggests the rest of the hour might have more of the same. Danger and naughtiness and cross lines. And misogyny and a white guy relying on black vernacular. But as the first burst of laughter is still rolling, Rife said he's just testing the water, seeing if y'all are going to be fun or not. I figure if we start the show with domestic violence, the rest of the show should be smooth sailing. This is the posture Rife holds for the rest of the hour. He's in a defensive stance. Will the audience be on board with him? Will they revolt? Will they be fun? Sometimes that defensiveness manifests as timidity and sometimes as aggression. But throughout, Rife holds in an adversarial position against the crowd who fills Washington, D.C.'s 3,000-seat Constitution Hall. Is, well, right away, if you're in Washington, D.C., ah, like, let's, that place is weird. That place is full of people that get butt hurt very easy. So let's, let's relax a little on that one. Anyways, okay, let's, let's skip down a little. So the dick jokes are the easiest to assess in much the same way that they're the easiest jokes to make. Rife has a few different versions. Some are more focused on size, some on masturbation, and some on the challenge of making women orgasm, which are really just dick jokes where the nerve bundle is a slightly different shape. The longest of them, whatever, are a selection where he imagines being rubbed off by monsters who lurk under his bed, and another story about finding his stepfather's collection of porn VHS tapes in a closet. The ideas Rife plays with most clearly are being young and figuring out how to feel about sexuality. In each joke, there's a looming menacing figure, the monster, the stepfather, whose threat is neutralized by ejaculate. Okay. This is a weird sort of take there on it. Let's dip down a little bit. Okay. All the chill, phallic delight is gone, exchange for real animus toward uh, these online trolls flooding his timeline. In the telling of the joke, these common... Commentators aren't yelling at him about his comedy. They're angry at him for breaking the rules, for being inconsiderate to others, and for making a flight attendant's job harder. Finally, he says, he snaps. What I've learned through therapy or whatever, more eye-rolling, is that I'm a very defensive person. Based on her profile picture, Rife, on her profile? Rife decides that the worst of the trolls is a heavier set woman. So he proceeds to make a comment about her presumed body size, and then becomes more, even more furious and the commenter accuses him of body shaming and demands that Rife be canceled. Bitch, you can't cancel me, he says. I'm not your gym membership. Yeah. So I'm just, this article goes on for a while. I'm just going to give you the Coles notes of, the, of, the, of his uh, special here. It's, it seems like he's uncomfortable. He does, a, lot, he does a, a thing that a lot of new comedians do, which is funny because he's like, this guy's seasoned. He's been working the, he's been wor working the, uh, you know, the smaller venues for a while. It might be because this was a, a big or a bigger venue and it was it was going to be on Netflix. So maybe the nerves were there. Um, but he does this, a lot of this filler stuff. You know, he's doing these these filler things and he's um, it's like, oh man, that kind of, like he's doing that kind of thing the whole time where it's like, you're going, you know, just kind of get to the punchlines a little bit more. That works better when he's riffing off the crowd. Then it's fine because he can kind of throw that in there. But this, this is him trying to put together an hour of actual stand-up comedy that doesn't rely on riffing off the audience. And in my, my opinion, it falls pretty flat. 
I wouldn't suggest watching it if you're a fan of Matt Reif because realistically, this one's just kind of if this one doesn't end his specials career at this point right now, if it doesn't kind of at least shelve it, uh, it's going to be one that's hopefully that people just kind of forget about. 